Have you ever felt overwhelmed with stress? Whether it's stress because of money problems, arguing with friends, or school and exam work, stress is a challenging but very common emotion. Stress is more than just an emotion though. It's a physical response, hardwired throughout our body to protect us from immediate threat. And it all starts in the brain. When we experience stress, an area in our brain called the hypothalamus signals to our adrenal glands. These glands are sat on top of our kidneys and when triggered, release the hormone cortisol, also known as our stress hormone. The release of cortisol causes changes in our bodies, including increasing our blood pressure. This means blood is pumping around our body faster to get oxygen to our muscles and organs. It also stops digestion, so we don't waste our energy. Our bodies are working to help us cope with the stress. This is the best response if we're running a race or working towards a deadline. However, if you're stressed more often than not, this continued high level of cortisol can have a negative effect on the brain. One area affected is the hippocampus. This area of the brain plays a role in learning and memory. It converts new information into long-term memories. Too much cortisol means that fewer new brain cells are made in the hippocampus making it harder to learn and remember new information. Not great if you're stressed about exams. The hippocampus also has a role in stopping the activity of our stress response. But with fewer new brain cells and electrical signals, it's less able to do this. So the more stressed you get, the more stressed you get. Studies have also shown that too much cortisol causes a loss of synaptic connections in the brain, and this causes the prefrontal cortex to shrink. This part of our brain is responsible for decision-making, judgement and regulating our behaviour. However, it's not all bad news. Firstly, there are things you can do to reverse the effects that too much cortisol has on your brain. Both exercising and meditating have been shown to help reverse these effects and increase the size of the hippocampus. Exercise also helps with concentration and learning. Secondly, we've spoken a lot about the role of cortisol in our stress response. But there is another hormone that has a very important role, but isn't as widely acknowledged. That hormone is oxytocin. You might know it as our cuddle hormone. Oxytocin is related to all things social. It makes us want physical and emotional closeness and makes us empathetic to the people we care about. When the stress response triggers the release of cortisol from the adrenal glands, the pituitary glands are releasing oxytocin. And its role in the stress response to encourage us to seek support when we're stressed, to talk to someone we trust instead of bottling these feelings up, and to empathise with people we care about when they are feeling stressed. So remember, our stress response is our body helping and protecting us. Too much stress can be harmful to the brain, but meditating and exercising can help undo this harm. Listen to your body and talk about your stress. It will help.